Hi everyone, how you doing? I'm Dan and I hope you all had a great Christmas. In today's quick tip video, I want to show you how to do a photo merge in Photoshop, going from images looking like this, to them all stitched together in Photoshop to give you a result like this. Now this is a really good technique if you don't have a super wide lens. Is what it allows you to do is take images at a tighter focal length and stitch them together to generate a wider image. So for example, this image here was taken with four shots and there was all 50 millimeters each. They've all been stitched together and now this looks more like a, maybe an 18 to 20 millimeter image. Another benefit of this technique is it allows you to increase the megapixels of the image. My Canon R6 takes images at 20 megapixels, but this image here, when all the images are stitched together, has ended up about 40 megapixels. The more images you stitch together, the higher the megapixels will be. It's a really quick technique to do in Photoshop, and it only takes around five or six clicks, and again, only around 30 seconds. So let's get into it. Firstly, you need to open the Photo Merge menu in Photoshop. So click number one will be File, and we're gonna navigate all the way down to Automate, and click number two will be Photo Merge. For this video, we'll just quickly click on Browse and select the images what we want to import. I'm just gonna use these raw ones here. I'm gonna hit open and then hit OK. Photoshop's just gonna have a little think about this and generate some masks to stitch your images together. It's generally quite a quick process, but sometimes it gets a little bit caught up. So here we go, Photoshop's quickly stitched all them images together and as you can see we've got a nice wide image now. The only thing we really need to do now to complete this image is just to get rid of the transparent areas. I'll just use a crop tool to do this, so if you hit C on the keyboard and then this box will show up and then I'm just going to click and drag to make sure there's no transparent areas in my scene. There we go, and one more here. So there we go. So there's the end result from four images, all taken at 50 millimeters. We've got a nice wide image. Let's take a more in-depth look at the photo merge menu. First of all, we've got the layout on the side here. This tells Photoshop how to stitch your images together. Generally, auto does quite a good job, but in some situations, you might want to change this just to change how the images are blending together. I tend to use perspective, cylindrical, and spherical more than the other two, but click on them and see what they do. We've also got some options down here. So the top one is blend images together. We definitely want that turned on. When this is turned on, Photoshop will generate masks to cut out the images and stitch them together. And it does a really good job of it. We've also got vignette removal. I definitely recommend turning this on too. This just gets rid of any vignettes what your lens has made. We've also got geometric distortion correction, which helps fix for lens barreling or fisheye effects. Definitely worth putting on as well. We've also got content aware filled transparent areas. This is really, really cool. As we saw earlier in the tutorial, I was left with a lot of transparent areas. If you turn content to wear fill on, Photoshop will try and fill these areas with other pixels from around the scene. Sometimes it does a really good job, other times it's not so good, but definitely worth a try. It's now filling the transparent pixels in. It's doing that quite quickly. And there we go. Um, you can hardly tell the pixels have been filled in. Photoshop's done a really good job. If I just press deselect, you can see there's nothing really to give away what these pixels have been copied from elsewhere. So definitely worth a try. Like I said before, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I think that's looking quite good. Thanks for watching this quick tip video in Photoshop. You can see last week's video, how to change the sky in six clicks on my YouTube channel. If you do like the videos I've been creating, it'd be great if you could like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I plan on making one a week and I want to get as many uploaded as possible. Thanks for watching. Cheers.